Lamentations chapter 3. Verses 22 and verse 26. Lamentations chapter 3. Verses 22 and verse 26. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not, because the Lord delighteth in mercy. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. You've been given today. The Lord has given you breath. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Church of the Living God. I know for certain that there are many of you out there right now who are depressed, who are sad, who are cast down, whom Satan is snaring you. Because what Satan likes to do is dredge up things of your past and hold them in the limelight to you. I learned uh, yesterday that a man whom I love as a brother, who is a friend who sticketh closer than a brother, shared with me that he doesn't want to wake up anymore at this point in his life. He doesn't want to get up. I also know that there are those who are being constantly bombarded by devils. I also know that there are people out there who struggle tremendously with loneliness. And those who are yearning right now to that they might be given one in their life that they may be a husband unto or a help meet unto. There's a lot of you, I, 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 I know for, for, for certain, are hurting. See, you've been given today. What are you going to do with today? What are you going to do with today? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> Uh, th this video is for the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth. Who is the ground and pillar of truth? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father.
This is for you. Because like I said, I know for certain. I know, <laughs> okay? A lot of you are just tore up right now. And, 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 and <laughs> hello, hello. Philippians chapter 3. I'm using two, um, two sets of scriptures for this video. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 2. Finally, my brethren, brethren, those who are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I think you might know where we're going. Just one verse. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Here in Philippians chapter 2, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the wisdom of men, and vain deceit. Through the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And not after Christ. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. I find it very interesting for devils will say unto those of the church of the living God, comments such as, how do you even pray with any righteousness when they themselves are devils? But see, that's what they do. That's a tactic to gnaw and to pine away at you. Beware, brethren, sisters. This wisdom cometh not from above, but is earthly, sensual, Devilish. First Thessalonians chapter two. First Thessalonians chapter two, verses one on to verse eight. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But af but even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated. As ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God, which with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor, of, nor in guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel... Even so we speak, not as pleasing men. For those things that are highly esteemed of men are an abomination in the sight of God. How can ye believe those who seek honor from men and not the honor that cometh from God only? I just paraphrased that, excuse me. Verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor cloak of covetousness, 
God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory. Neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. Hmm. Have you ever prayed that what another brother was going through might be imparted unto you so that they may have some relief? Have you ever said, their burden be upon me, Lord, that they may have some relief, some rest, just a moment of comfort? You ever done that? Have you, you've done it, <clears throat> but have you really meant it? And what if the Lord did so? What if the Lord did so? Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence in the flesh. Look at that verse again. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verses 1 on to verse 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the, capital S, Spirit. And the Lord is that Spirit our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who walk not after the flesh, earthly things, your pleasures, your greeds, but after the Spirit, and that's capital S, the Lord himself. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. You're not bound to it. You have freedom. Okay? You are not holden to your sin. You have the choice to do what God loves, to abstain from all appearance of evil, or to give in to your flesh to indulge. He doesn't force you to do it. Neither does his adversary, the accuser of the brethren. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. It was weak through the flesh. Okay? The law was there to show you and me of how Weak we are, and at our best state, we are altogether vanity. Okay? We, we know this as the Church of the Living God, but let's continue. God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin 
in the flesh. You have to get this verse, brother, sister. Our spirit and soul are within this body. And hence, hence, okay, okay, the spirit is going to war against the flesh. Hence, you are going to sin. You have the choice to do either or. But you are going to sin. And again, I have to kick this really quickly. If any one of you of the church of the living God who say to yourself or boast of yourself, I don't sin every day. You're a liar. You're a liar. See, because when you say stuff like that, that means that for a day you are sinless, just like Christ, who is sinless, who could not sin. Who are you making your boast of? The Lord or of yourself? But see, we are going to stumble. We are going to sin, brethren. And sin has been condemned where? In the flesh. Hence, we have no confidence in the flesh. Whereas the devil and his ministers of righteousness want you to have confidence in the flesh because it's all on you. Where is your confidence? See, the devil is going to make you ponder the things of your flesh. Works. And you know what I'm talking about. Let's continue. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Is your mind seated in heavenly things? Are you eternally minded? Or do you just see what is in front of you today? And in the fact that the Lord has allowed you today means that your time ain't up yet, is it? Right? Right? What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? For to be carnally minded, carne, carnal, fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, very quickly, if you are in sin, if you have a sin that you are keeping alive, and you are receiving chastening, praise the Lord for it. Because if you ain't being chastened, guess what? You are a bastard. According to the scriptures. And a bastard does not know who his father is. I know who my father is. Because when I sin, oh, the Lord chastens me quite sore. <laughs> Literally. 
If you're being chastened for something that you know is sin, and you keep making excuses, knowing that your flesh is weak, what does that verse say? For to be carnally minded is death. Living in the flesh. Living in the flesh. Giving yourself over onto things that you know you shouldn't. That's living in the flesh. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spiritually minded is life and peace. Knowing that when you do what is according to the scriptures, you have life. You have peace. No regrets. Because you know that what you have done is in accordance with the scripture. Because the spirit of truth, who is in you, church of the living God, will guide you into all truth. Verse 7, because the carnal mind, carnal, carne, flesh, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Get a load of that. You know what you're doing maybe is wrong according to the scripture. But keep doing it. That's a carnal mind, brother, sister. And that mind is an, is an enemy of God, enmity against God. Here's the spirit, here's the flesh. You've been given today. What are you going to do with it? Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And, and go now to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 3 on to verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 on to verse 6. For though we walk in the flesh, because our spirit and soul is in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly, fleshly devices, fleshly maneuverings, our own intellect, our own cunningness, our own tactics. No. No, 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 no. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holes. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now get a load of that. See, you have your mind on the things of the flesh. You're going to have that war. Okay? Absolutely you are. But see, the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly. What does it say there? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What? What is it that has that has in you become a strong hold? 
Only you can answer that. What is it? Concupiscence? Lust? An addiction? Loneliness? Covetousness? What is it? What is it that makes your mind gravitate to the things of the flesh? Carnally minded, what is it? How do you turn that over onto the Lord? Oh. I think you got the answers right in your hands. Don't you? And it's good to know that you can't do it. Because guess what, cousin? You can't. But the Lord who is in you, He can do it. You just got to have the guts to do what He tells you to do, no matter the cost. And that cost is quite profound, isn't it? And then we'll, you reach verse 6. Ha, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. What happens when you give your mind over to these things that you know you shouldn't? And because of that, giving your mind over to those things you shouldn't, your flesh follows suit. You knowing that you shouldn't. Grieving the Holy Ghost who is in you. God the Father in you. Shall you take the members of Christ and join it together with a harlot? A harlot such as Mystery Babylon? If that's if that's in a literal thing for you, then praying for you. But you know what I'm saying? And after you have been, you've given yourself over, and the Lord is like, I've warned you, you're going to disappoint. Go ahead. What happens? That guilt. That shame. Guilt and shame is a good thing unto the church of the living God. But it's there to cause you to repent. To turn from yourself. You know, the carne, the flesh, unto the Lord. And then you will have what? Having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. The, the scriptures are not here, brethren, just for our amusement. Okay? These are not just guidelines. We are to obey what the scriptures tell us to do. You like say, oh, it's easy for you, Brett. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, I am able to fight fire uh, with anyone. Fight fire with fire, just the same as anyone. And let loose these things being held on to in case. But see, we as the Church of the Living God, we don't fight like that. <laughs> For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Are they? Philippians chapter uh, 3 verses 4 on to verse 6 now. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, 
touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He was blazing with anger. Oh yeah, he thought he was in the right, persecuting the church of the living God. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Think of, now think about this, brethren. When Satan and his ministers come at you trying to dredge up the things in your past. See, that's what they do. Okay. The devil and his angels want to keep you here instead of you pressing onward. Okay. They want to keep you here. They want to shackle you here instead of pressing onward. Okay? And if anyone could have been suspect, not suspect, um, victim to that, his own self-pity, First Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. But there are some of there out there who's like, oh, I'm not that bad. <laughs> uh, you're right. You're worse. <laughs> but see, you got to remember, brethren, self-pity, when you get right down to it, is just another form of what? Self-glorification. Oh, yeah, roll that around in your head a little bit. Verse 16, how be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering. Get a load of that. For a pattern, a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. A pattern, meaning. His example. Verse 17. Now unto the King Eternal, capital K, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. See, Paul's past was his past. And what he went through, okay, how the Lord saved him out of that to be as a pattern. Someone who was injurious, a blasphemer. He put the church, those of the church of the living God, to death. He didn't, he didn't do it himself, but he delivered them over. Hence, putting them to death. If anyone could have been racked with self-pity, being shackled with the past failures, sure could have been Paul. Now you got to keep in mind, it is healthy for you to remember from whence ye came, as he did here, okay? Verse 13, who was before a blasphemer. I used to be like you in your witnessing. 
I used to be like you. You see? And a persecutor. I used to be like you. I, I, I hated God. I hated it all. I didn't, I just, don't want to hear it. But what happens? Verse 14. Oh, let's finish verse 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord, the grace of our Lord, was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who they are chief. No, of whom I am chief. Did Paul stay right there? No, there's a verse 16. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy. That in me first, Jesus Christ might chew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life ever, everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul didn't stay there. Like I said, it's healthy for you every once in a while to remember. It's like, oh, wow, Lord, the fact that you had saved me from what I once was and brought me out of that slew of despond and have led me these going on 13 years now. What, why did you ever? I'll praise you for what you have done, Lord, in my life. And then you go on. Then you go on. If you have a sin that you are dealing with, you have today. Are you going to let your flesh rule you? Well, you don't think that the Lord can give you what you need to cast it away? You think the Lord is that weak? I'm here to tell you. He ain't. Dear brother. Dear, dear sister. Philippians chapter 3 now, verses 7 on to 11. With no pun intended. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. All the things from verses 4 on to verse 6, which he was doing in his flesh. He thought he was doing right by God, by doing these things in his flesh. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Dung. Poopy. <laughs> all things. There ain't a sin out there that is good for you. And your sin that you might be clinging to. You are valuing more than the one who loved you and died for you. And has given you the earnest of the Spirit himself. Whatever he wants you to lose is worth it. The more you lose of yourself and of your flesh, the more he's there. 
My grace is sufficient for thee, for my power is made perfect in what? Weakness. Remember, when you are weak, you are strong. Why? Because the power of Christ rests upon you, dear brother, dear sister, dear sister. Yes. Verse 9. And being found in him, walking in the Spirit, not having mine own righteousness, which he described in verses 4 on to verse 6, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. By faith. that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Romans chapter 8 again. Romans chapter 8. Verses 12, oh yeah, on to verse 28. What's the matter? What's the matter? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Maybe not right away, but the wages of sin is death. That works both ways. For the lost, also for we who are of his body, if you mess around with it. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, put down, ye shall live. I got to stop quickly here for a moment. Um, I recently have been getting into a lot of the writings of the Puritans. Not that way, wait. Chill. Yeah, the Puritans were, they had some issues. They were Trinitarian. Uh, they would kill you. Uh, the Puritans of old, because I reject, I am totally against the Trinity. <clears throat> okay? Satanic. Because of that, they would put me to death. Oh, they would. The Puritans would have killed me. But some of their writings on mortification, abstaining from sin is not bad. Granted, remember too, they, the Puritans were primarily Calvinistic. But when it came to personal holiness, when it came to mortification, sin, that kind of stuff, a lot of their writings weren't that bad. Of course, you gotta take it with a grain of salt, of course, because <laughs> the Puritans, they had a lot of issues. But a lot of their writings, when it comes in that specific area, were not bad. Not bad. Let's continue. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, that's capital S, that's the Lord himself, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit, capital S, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And if the Lord is that spirit, the spirit of adoption, and we cry, Abba, Father, doth that not mean that Jesus Christ is God the Father?
<laughs> Excuse me. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Now, that's not a self-imposed suffering where you go out of your way to be a jerk on the people and like, oh, I'm sorry. You just walk and adhere your life to the scriptures. Call sin, sin. In yourself first. Okay? Uh, the, the, the persecution and sufferings will come. Trust me on that. Okay, I, I kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to that. Okay? Let's continue. Oops. For I reckon, brother, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to com be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, those who are his body, the church of the living God, those of us who are saved, born again, and converted. Not you devils. <laughs> for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. They're groaning out there. They're waiting for their... Messiah, who's going to be the son of perdition. We, the church of the living God, are waiting for, come up hither. There's two different groanings. One, a groaning to go back to <laughs> normal. The other, a groaning to ever be with the Lord. Verse 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, not only they, but ourselves also, they of the world, ourselves, the church of the living God, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, capital S, and right there, he just told you who the they and ourselves is, ourselves is, which have this first fruits of the Spirit. Those who are saved. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of the body, the redemption of the purchased possession. But yet you have today, if he has given you today. You have breath today. What are you going to do with today? Better yet, are you going to seek the Lord to see what the Lord will have you to do with today? Snap out of it. <laughs> Snap out of it. That made you jump. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Verse 24, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the capital S Spirit, the Lord himself, also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Spend a lot of time praying for yourself. 
What about for others? What about for those of the church of the living God, your brothers who have disassociated themselves from you because of a disagreement? Do you still pray for them? What if you've been separated away from those who are not of the church of the living God, but they themselves want to be, but yet are stumbling over something? Do you still pray for them? <laughs> I'm challenging you. How much of your prayer is for other people? Huh? And not this, uh, I hope God drops this guy dead, this guy dead, this guy dead. I do pray that the Lord reward some of these evil devils according to their deeds. And he will. He will. Remember, you, you got to remember, brethren, this is their hour in the power of darkness, okay? We must decrease and he must increase. The Lord Jesus Christ in us, we must decrease. But see, this is their hour in the power of darkness. You got to remember that. But how often do you pray for other people? Or are you too concerned with your self-pity? Woe is me. And stay there. Like I said, there are, there are people out there who um, I used to have a, a fellowship with who we've um, parted ways because of disagreements, which is fine. That happens. Okay, that happens. It happens. But for a brother who you disagree with, who is a true brother, even though, okay, you, you, you don't have fellowship, you don't talk anymore, whatever, do you still pray for them? For their blessing? For their recompense with they see? Or are you too selfish? And see, being selfish like that, brother, sister, being carnally minded. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, that love God, to them who are the called, saved, according to his purpose. Your health is failing you. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that love God. A condition. To them who are the called, called in Christ Jesus, not the Calvinistic nonsense, but called in Christ Jesus, according to his purpose. Dare I say whatever is happening to you or happening to you, brother, sister, is for your good. <laughs> we might not think that right now, right? But see, have your mind on heavenly things, on things of the Spirit, eternally minded, instead of carnally minded. And some of you will be saying, well, that's, that's nonsense, Brad, because I got to eat. I got to do this. I got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't think the Lord can take care of you? Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses six on verse 18. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 on verse 18. In whom, oh wait, wait, wait. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this, this treasure. What is this treasure? The seal. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. The Lord in us. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ in you. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. <laughs> we are perplexed, perplexed it, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. You have today, don't you? Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For which we live, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. In him was life. Uh, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father living within you. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up Jesus, uh, excuse me, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are yours. All things are for your sakes. Excuse me. All things are for your sakes. Beg your pardon. <laughs> that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish. You, brother. But pay attention. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day, for his mercies are new every morning. If your inner man is not being renewed day by day, even though all hell is going on around you, by your own doing, Not by your own doing. What's the problem? You know what the problem is. What are you waiting for? Look at me. Look at me. Or do you really just enjoy that perverseness of your self-indulgence and glorifying yourself in your suffering. For our light affliction, in light of eternity, Okay? In light of eternity. 
I'm speaking on to the church of the living God. Not you filthy devils. You go away. You will be going away. Well, we'll be going away first, obviously. <laughs> but, um, in light of eternity, brother, sister. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You got to remember, time to our Lord is not like how we view time. Remember, a thousand years is like a day unto our Lord. He's outside of our time. Okay? In eternity, eternal, forever and ever and ever and ever, time doesn't really matter, does it? So, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And, and Hebrews... Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, Hebrews 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, now let's continue. Verses 12 on to verse 14 in Philippians chapter 3. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things which are behind and these devils want to keep you back here. Oh, that's what they want to do. Some of you are letting them. See, because the devils can't get beyond that. They stay here because they're dead in trespasses and sins. They say they have life, but they're dead. And you, as the church of the living God, you are their most deadliest enemy. It doesn't matter who you are, brother or sister. Unto these devils, they hate you. Because you are pressing forward. They want to bring you back. Look. Repent. Confess, have the blood of Jesus wash away your sins. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Not some, all. Okay? Pray on it. Don't dwell on it. Get it taken care of. Go to the Lord, repent, confess, get right with the Lord, okay? And have faith on him that what he says in the scriptures, he will do for you. What, what, you, what you think the, the blood of Jesus Christ is nothing? It cleanses you from all sin, past, present, and future. You don't do that plead the blood stuff that's not to be found in Scripture. No. 
forsake it. And, and, and then move on. But if you're half-heartedly forsaking it, just for a moment, only to go back to it, you know what you should do then? You should shut yourself up, close everything off, turn everything off, do whatever you got to do, get your face on that ground and don't get up until it's hammered out between you and the Lord. And until you do that, what good is an exhortation going to do you besides a shot in the arm if you keep going back to your own vomit? I don't understand. I do. I do. Because the flesh is weak. The flesh profiteth nothing. Go to Galatians, chapter 2. Galatians, chapter 2. The... When you think about it, the most profound thing, when you really think about this, the most profound thing Paul ever has said, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 on to verse 21, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ lives within you. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. Who is Jesus Christ, God our Father, How many, how many times have you read this and just, yeah, yeah. But how often have you just sat there and rued, R-U-E, upon this? Of how profound it truly is. And to think that you are within that category yourself. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, now, if you got to stop this video and just sit there, for the Lord, looking at that scripture, do, do whatever you got to do. Don't quickly, glibly go over that. Please. Okay? Because look at this. Look at this. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. By the law. Christ is dead in vain. If righteousness come by the law. Frustrate the grace of God. You know where we're going next, don't you? Yeah. The grace of God. Okay, maybe you... <laughs> I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 8. On to verse 10. They'll read 8 and 9, but they, they won't go on. You, you, you got to, I mean, you'll read the whole chapter, obviously. But 8 through 10. 
For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, and those works are what? The works of the law. Lest any man should boast. Because look at what Paul was doing. He boasted of what he was in the law, right? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Newness of life. Okay? Newness of life. And uh, let's see. Oh, where is that? One quick second, brother, and sorry to break the thing here. And let's remember Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And then you go back to um, Galatians chapter 2. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication, and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, failed that one, nor jesting, failed that one, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Thank you, Lord, for having mercy on a sinner who is chief, such as me. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, whatever you're cover, coveting after is your idol. Whether it's money, lust, fame, whatever, but there again, whatever you're lusting over is to gratify what? Your flesh. So, in other words, you are your own idol. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Those who have heard the truth, know the truth, but reject the truth, and choose the things which are mentioned in verse 5, being carnally minded. What does Jude say? These uh, spots and blemishes they are in, their, in your feasts of charity while they feast with you? Something around those lines. 
Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the capital S Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove them. How? Through the scriptures. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Is this a carnal book? <clears throat> if you don't know the answer to that, you, you got some bigger things you need to worry about. <laughs> Let's continue. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know, a lot of people at verse 12 will think, right away think of what? Sexual stuff, right? Ah, uh, yeah, possibly if that's in there, I would say, but think outside of that. What things they do in secret. How they manipulate. How they pretend to be things that they are not. Pretending to be a myriad of different people. Sowing discord, trying to throw mud on people from way outside their own locality, which was very impressive. It's not just confined to one thing there. Keep that in mind. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Here's your light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools. What is a fool? If you do not know, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But as wise. What is wisdom? Job 28, 28. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil and to depart from evil, excuse me, is understanding. Remembering, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Dear, dear friend, dear brother, dear sister, you've been given today. <sighs> You have been given breath. Redeeming. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. What are you going to do with today? Are you just going to sit there? I, I, I'm not talking about going out there and doing it with whatever. That'd be great. Praise the Lord. Are, are you going to spend time in the scriptures? Are you going to pray? Are you going to sing songs? Hymns? What are you going to do with the opportunity, the chance that the Lord has given you today, dear brother and sister? What are you going to do with it? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And if you are truly of the church of the living God, saved, born again, and converted, you know what the will of the Lord is to abstain from all appearance of evil. To put Christ first in everything. For he who does not forsake all cannot be my disciple. And as we have already saw, Paul counted all things as what? Dung. Poopy. That he may 
gain Christ. Not that he was gaining him, but relational sake. Yeah, once again, we are getting at the relationship between you and your Lord. Sin, sorrow, and death. Which one is it? Is your sin causing you sorrow? Praise the Lord. Is sorrow of the world and stuff like that getting you or death. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Look, again, if you're in sin, you need to get that squared away with the Lord right now. But once that has come to pass, Leave it there and go on. Get going. Because remember, Satan wants to keep you here, not going forward. Oh, little brother, what would happen? Once you got past that, see, they know, the devils know. But until that come, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the capital S Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things. What did we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 28? giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. To be crucified is self-sacrifice. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Paul never talked about the fear of God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Philippians chapter 4. Brad, we're in Philippians chapter 3. We have not gotten past uh, verse 14 yet. Yeah, I know. It's a problem. Hmm? It's a problem. Philippians. Hands are sweaty. Chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 14. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation, not indulgence, not excess, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But, semicolon, colon, continuing the train of thought in the sentence. But, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, may be made known unto God. Beg your pardon. So, be careful for nothing. But, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts 
and minds through Christ Jesus. And right there it is. Why don't you have peace? Why don't you have peace, brother? It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And because you do it like that, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. <laughs> Have you ever run into the, um, with everything that's going on, how can you be so peaceful? I would explain it to you. But see, this says, unless you are spiritually minded and the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ is that spirit, unless you are of him, the church of the living God, I don't think you're going to get it. Why isn't there peace? Sin, sorrow, or death? Which one is it? You ain't never going to have peace until you quit messing around and get worked out what you know needs to be worked out. And that is the only thing that I could ever say to you, dearly beloved. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. True scriptures, honest scriptures, just the scriptures, pure of the scriptures, lovely, good report. Brand, you're worshiping a book. Uh, no. See, the Lord speaks to me through this book, the scriptures. He cuts me. He kisses me. He smacks me upside the head. Does he do that with you? then why aren't you taking heed to it? And if he doesn't, like I said, then you got some bigger problems you need to work out. Okay? Verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Again, as a pattern. Paul is our example. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want. <laughs> For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, Therewith to be content. Oh boy, brother, sister. <laughs> Some of you know what that is right now. Yeah, you do. Uh huh. I know both how to be abased 
and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in some things. I <clears throat> you weren't expecting that, were you? Everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Why? I can do all things through Christ, with strength which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding ye have well done, that ye did communicate with my affliction. The much quoted, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And again, going back to Galatians chapter 2. You know, like I said earlier, really rue, muse, ponder. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Are you still looking back? Are you letting these devils have their way with you? Or is there something there back there that you like? What is it? I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if the righteousness come by, for if righteousness, excuse me, come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Let's continue, shall we? Verse 15 on to verse 17. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this unto you. Perfect. Now that does not mean sinlessly perfect. This being perfect. That you love the Lord. That you love him. Not use them as a something that you pick up and put down at your convenience. No. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth within me. And what does that say? Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, condition of the heart, be thus minded, and if in and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, carnally minded, what does it say there? We have a promise here. God shall reveal even this unto you. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Because see, you want to mind the things of the flesh, or excuse me, you want to mind the things of the flesh or the things of the spirit. And if you are otherwise minded, what does that say? God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, where two we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. I love that. Ensample. I love that. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 on verse 13. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better, 
uh, let each esteem other better than themselves. Self-sacrifice, putting others first before your own needs. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How can that mind be in you if you are telling people to sign up for the military? The Jesuit military. How can that mind be in you if you are encouraging people to get the shot? Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And verse 6, you check this out on your own time. The Bibles, the Catholic Bibles, just blow this up out of the water. They destroy it. Verse 7, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And that he feared if I remember, I'll try to link that video in this one. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord. In context with 9 and 10, everyone is going to confess that who are not his. Wherefore, my beloved... As ye have always obeyed, not as in my present presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now see, only a devil would take that and try to twist it and say, your teaching works salvation. God has put something within you. It's, you're working it out. Not hoarding it, but working it out. Working it out. Like I said, only a devil. But twist that. Your teaching works of it. But brethren... Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. How do you do that? Oh, by trusting what he said and adhering to it. And not, not just when you feel like it either. Because, because if you're if you're doing that just when it suits you, you you're missing the point. Let's continue. Let's continue. Second Timothy chapter three. I was just going to say that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter three. Verses 10 on to verse 17. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse uh, what is it, 17. To close of the chapter. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch at 
at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. <laughs> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Are you not assured? Knowing of whom thou hast learned them, uh, from a man or from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? Hmm? And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through Jesus Christ, or through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Beg your pardon. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Second Timothy, chapter 4, verses 5, on to verse 8. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of, a, of an evangelist, make foolproof thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but all unto all them who, who uh, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And no matter what these devils can do to you or say to you, they ain't going to take that away from you. Again, brethren, you've been given today. What are you going to do with today? Because See, as a youngin, and even not as a youngin, until you actually stare death in the face, you don't think about it, do you? Hmm, you think you're immortal, you know, in many respects, don't you? Again, you, me, everyone is going to die. You and I, we don't fear death because we know where we're going. The devils. They fear death. Because they know where they're going. And misery loves company. And in any way, they can make you miserable. Then they have achieved their end. Because remember, the end 
justifies the means to these people. Isn't that right, devil? Verses 18 on to verse 20. In Philippians chapter 3. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, belly, flesh, Ooh. and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also, also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy, chapter 4, since we are right here, verses 14 on verse 18. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also? For he hath greatly withstood our words. And in place of Alexander, put whose ever name of these devils you want. Oh, I'm so tempted to say a name, several, but I'm not going to because that's what they want. But remember that, brethren. Hmm. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. It's going to happen to you, brother, sister. It happens. Don't be downtrodden or downcast too greatly over it. It happens. It happens. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. You're lonely, huh? Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. She's not coming back. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me, I pray you that be enough. That by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Who's going to preserve you? Who's going to stand with you? Easy for you to say, Brad, you have a wife. Uh, you know, before I was uh, a saved man, I was a sodomite. And anyone who has been 
a sodomite knows what emptiness that is, what hollowness. And once you get saved and born again converted, the Lord fills that. And granted, it is not good for a man to be alone. That is true. Are you alone? Uh, well, no, I, I know the Lord. <laughs> I love you very much. Shut up! Shh! I, I, I love you. Well, yeah, but, yeah, but, shh, 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 shut up. Shush. Are you going to tell me that don't mean anything? Romans chapter 16 now. Almost done. Romans chapter 16. About those who greatly withstand words, who's, who are enemies of the cross of Christ. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 20. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division, divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. It happens. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Fair words and good speeches. Or, excuse me, good words and fair speeches. Excuse me. Deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men, and I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. There are many people out there who say this is good, but it's actually evil. Being wise, the fear of the Lord, having wisdom as to what is good. How do you know what good is? The Scriptures. And how do you know what is evil? Being simple about it. Um, if it's condemned in the scripture, it's evil. End of story. No, yeah, but, yeah, but. Making justification for sin. If it's evil, it's evil. And if it's good, prove all things. How? It is written. It is written. It is written. And verse 20, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet, sh feet shortly. Reference on to um, uh, Genesis chapter 3 with uh, verse 15. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Oh, we're not done yet. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 16. Uh, let's refresh our memories. Verses 18 on to verse 20 in Philippians chapter 3. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, their flesh, themselves, Satan, <laughs> and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, very quickly, very quickly, about uh, verse 19, whose glory is in their shame. 
Uh, very quickly on that, got to touch this. Romans chapter 1, verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, excuse me, worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. Now go back to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 11 on to verse 16. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? And that's a lowercase s. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the capital S, spirit of God, the Lord himself. Now we have not received the spirit of the world. What case is that S? but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. But the spirit which is of God, that's also a lowercase s here, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, imparted unto us. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Beware of anyone who calls themselves a critical thinker, especially when it comes to matters of the faith and doctrine and the truth that is in Christ Jesus. Beware of that. Yea, hath God said. Nine times out of ten is what that leads into. But the natural man who is not saved, unregenerate, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Capital S. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. All these devils who attack people, they know nothing of righteousness even though they have sat right in the midst of it. They can't know it. They can't know the truth. They can know it, but they can't know it. See? Because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Judgeth all things. That includes ourselves. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? but we have the mind of Christ. And let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And what was that? Being crucified. Self-sacrifice. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6, verses 12 on to verse 18. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh. Yeah, look at you, tough guy, right? That was not directed to you, the body of Christ. They constrain you to be circumcised, go under the law, do things of the flesh, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Think about how all these devils are trying to get you to question yourself and to stay back here, okay? Think about that. Think about that. They themselves are pointing out this, this, and this, and they themselves are not doing even a third of what they themselves are trying to attack you with, are they? Who's the true hypocrite? <laughs> right? Think about that, brethren. Keep that in your mind. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. 
The cross is what? Death. Death unto the world. Death unto ourselves. Death to our flesh. Right? For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be upon them, be on them, excuse me, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Look at verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Oh, you know, we're, we're, we're hitting it again. Second uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And 21, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Verse 14 in Galatians chapter 6. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world, being dead unto the world. But see, if you keep giving in to your flesh, being carnally minded of the world, In verse 21 in Philippians chapter 3, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Go to Titus. Titus chapter 2. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity in <laughs> patience. Oh, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers not giving them much wine teachers of good things some of you sisters you elder sisters there are sisters out there who are young in the Lord who could really use some of your insight. Find them. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, See, you elder sisters with the younger, impart that to them. Find them. Seek and you will find. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. If you're not being obedient to your husband, the word of God is blasphemed. Your husband, 
hopefully is a godly man, who, one who loves the Lord, fears the Lord, and loves the book, okay? And seeks to live life according to the scriptures, okay? And one who does that is not going to take advantage of you and make you his puppet tool, okay? Even though you are a help meet unto your husband, okay? Okay, you get it? Okay. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, shewing thyself a pattern of good works. Pattern, remember the thing of the pattern that Paul mentioned of himself in 1 Timothy chapter 1? In all things, shewing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, shewing uncorruptness. Gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but shewing all good fidelity, fealty, excuse me, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. You can tie verse uh, 14 here in uh, Titus chapter 2 with uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. People are going to despise you. Don't let it bother you. Stand. And know on whom you do stand. On what you do stand. Have confidence on the Lord. Okay? And finally... 1 Corinthians, of course we had to go there. 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 50, on to verse 58. Oops. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption this inherit incorruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. I remember people trying to uh, put former President Donald Trump into this because of that. But, yeah, I beg your pardon. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death! Where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. What does that mean? Thou wouldest not know covet unless the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. You wouldn't have known that making an idol is a bad thing unless the Catholics took out that commandment. <laughs> yeah. 
You get the point. But thanks be to God, which give us, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And of course, finally, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, on to verse 18. Then we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Revelation 22, verse 20 and 21. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Like I said, I, I know that so many of you out there right now are depressed, sad. I pray that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, through this may comfort you. Um... And I hope that our Lord will use this to be a comfort unto you, brother, sister, whoever you are of the Church of the Living God, who are struggling legitimately and um, who are going through so much stuff right now. Whatever it is, you're not alone. And whatever it is, it's a light affliction that endureth for a moment. If you're in sin, get that worked out, man, woman. And don't allow the devils to keep you chained back here. And beware of giving yourself over to self-pity, which is nothing more than self-exhortation, which is a very easy trap for many of us to fall into. There's nothing more to say. I love you. We love you, Sue and I. We, we love you so very much. And we pray for many of you daily. I, I hope, I really do pray and hope this may be some encouragement to some of you. We love you. Thank you. And we will see you in the next video.